Hello and welcome to this video of the course Answer Set Solving in Practice, where we are going to do the part 1c of the exercise on simple solving of the computational aspects part of the course. Here we have this program P, and now I've copied it here once and twice because we are going to be doing the redact with respect to a lower bound and the redact with respect to an upper bound here. And as you can see here, I'm just taking the first two letters or the first letter of the atoms to make things more compact. Okay, let's start with it. So here we have the empty set and here the up initial upper bound is the set of all atoms. That's D, S, H, S, A, and S, N. Okay, now we start with the empty set. Let's do the redact here. So then these two disappear, and then we get the D, S, H here. Oh, this also disappears. S, A there, and with S, A, S, H here, but we already had it, and S, N also here. So we have the four atoms as consequences. So we write them here, D, S, H, S, A, S, N. And we do the intersection, and it's exactly, exactly the same set. And now we have to do the redact with respect to this. And what happens here is that all these rules go away. Then these rules have all some element in the body. Then the consequence, set of consequences is the empty set. And we have it here. And we get then the union, right? Because here we do the union, and here we do the intersection. Okay, so what we have seen is that starting with this lower bound and upper bound, we end up with with the same sets, right? So this doesn't give us any new information. Then we have to make a choice to continue with the solve algorithm. And we have to make a choice on some atom. We can choose any of these four here. Let's make SH first true and then false. So here we make sh true and here we make it false. So to make it true, we are going to have here sh and to make it false, we are going to say that this is not possible. So then we will have here like that and just to complete here, I have d, sh, sa, sn. And here we will have the empty set. Okay, so let's start with the case where we say we assume that SH is true and, and that everything is possible. So then from here we have to get the consequences with respect to this, and this we have already computed before is the empty set. Then we have the empty set here and here. Oops, this, yes. Okay, this I was painting it in, in red before, so I will continue now with red here also. Like in the other exercises, I was using red on this part, so just to have the same thing, or almost the same thing, let's continue now with red. Okay, now for this, we have to do the redact with respect to SH. And for this, let me clean now these programs. And okay, then with respect to SH, this goes away and this becomes simplified like this. So then we have SH here and with SH, SN. And that's it, right? Because we don't, I oh know, sorry. So I do not have SN, so I get SA from here. Yes, okay, this was it. And with SA, I can get the set here, but I already have it. And with um, SH, I get uh, SM from this point. And uh, yes, that's it. Oop. And here I don't have the D, so this is it. So then let's come to this place where I say <coughs> S, H, S, A, and S, N, right? And then here when we do the intersection, we have it like this. And now that I have, um, I, I was a bit 
confused while I'm doing this. So let's let's now come to the moment where we try to get uh, the intuitive understanding of this. What this means, what we did, just means that every any stable model where SH is true has to be a subset of this. So basically, this means that if SH is true, then D has to be false, right? And this has to be the case because if SH is true, then we cannot derive from, from here, sorry, we cannot derive the D from here, and D has to be false, right? And and then we have that um, <coughs> also if, yeah, and we don't know, and then what we have seen is that we could derive the, in principle, we could derive SH and with SH, SN, and we could also derive here the, the SA, right? Okay, now let's continue with this. So here I have SH, and then this means, okay, let's continue that. And here I have SH, SA, SN. And with SH, I do the same as before. So I come here and I will have SH, SA, SN. And here I do the intersection and I obtain the same. And now here I have to get the consequences of P with uh, reduced by this set. And then I'm going to do this there at the top. So I have SH, so this goes away. I have SA, so nothing happened. This goes here and this goes away. Then from this, I get SH from SH SN, and that's it because I don't have the either the A or the D, right? Yes, so then this is SH and SN. And then doing the union, I get SH and SN. So intuitively, what this says is that every a stable model that is a subset of this is a superset of this. Or put another way, if D is false, then SH and SN are true. And this is the case because if D is false here, then we have SH and we have SN from here, right? So this makes sense. Okay, now let's come to, to this next step where we have here, I think I'll have to move this a bit down. Oops just to make some room. So here I have SH and SN, and here I have SH, SA, SN. Again, these, I have to get the consequences here, and this will be the same as what we did before. SH, SN, and then here we do the union. Okay, and now here we have to do write the consequences with respect to this. And then let's clean all these. Okay, so we have, let's repeat, we have SH, SN. So this goes away, this literal goes away, and this rule goes away. And now this is exactly, you see the redact that we have here is exactly the one we had before, right? And the consequences for this case were SH, SN, and this is what we are going to get, right? We get the SH from here and the SN from there, and we neither have the D or the SA. So then here SH, SN, and then we do the intersection SH, SN. Again, intuitively, if we have a set SN in a set, then this then uh, those are the only possible atoms. So this means that D and SA are false, right? So if we have, let's come now to the program here. If we have a set, we cannot derive the D. And then the other was the SA that we couldn't derive either because to derive SA, we either did the 
need the D, but the D we cannot get it from here. Or we have not of Sn, but we say that we have Sn, right? So then it makes sense that if this is true, then uh, Sa and uh, D are false, right? So nothing else than these two can then be possible. Good, now we come to this row, and I think we are going to finish now. Because now we just have to do find the consequences with respect to the set, and we have already found them just a second ago here, and the same story if we do if we do this, right? Because we already know that the consequences with this respect to, of the redact with respect to the set is this very same set. So we get SH SN here, we get union, and here same story, the intersection, and it's the same set. And then we have that this L prime is the same as L, and this U prime is the same as U. So then the expand algorithm stops here after these four steps. And we also have that L equals U, hence this is a stable model. So then we can write here that we have SH, SA. And now if we come, come to, to the place where we assume that uh, SH is false, here we come to this place and we get the same consequences as we got before. So we have DSH, oops, SA, SN, and here we do the intersection D, SA, SN. And now we have to do the redact with respect to this one. D S A S N. Let's clean the program here. So we have D, so this goes away. We have S A and we have S N, so this goes away, and it's like that, right? Okay, so then here we derive D. With D we have S A, with S A S H, and we says S H S N, right? Let's do it again so that I'm sure I didn't make any mistakes. So here we didn't have S H, we have the D from here, with the D we have S A, with S A S H, and with S H S N. Hence we get everything on this side D S H S A S N, and with the union we get all of them D S H S A S N. And now what we see is that this is not smaller than this, right? And then we know that this is a failure and we stop. Now uh, let's reason about this for a moment. So uh, to see what this means intuitively. So here we were looking for, for we wanted to find some solution where that was between the empty set and the set here. And basically it was a solution where SH was false, right? And then what we have is that if SH is false, and here we derive the D, the SA, we derive the SH and the is SN, right? So basically what we have is that if, um, if SH is false, then all have to be true, right? Let's do it again. So if we have SH false, we will end up deriving also that SH is true because we have the D with the D. Um, we have SA and with SA, SN, right? So let's do it again. SH false, I get the D. With the D, I get the SA. And with the SA, I get the SH, right? So basically, if I assume SH to be false, I will get that it's true. Right. <clears throat> so then, given that if SH, um, that if SH is false here, it is true, then there cannot be any stable model where SH is false, right? Because whenever it's false, we have that it's true. Then we can close. Then the way the algorithm identifies this is by by realizing that this condition uh, that this. Uh, L is not a subset of this, right? And then we can conclude here, and we know this is not a stable model. Hence, uh, we know that 
Uh, after all this, uh, here we are looking for a stable model where SH is true, and we came to the conclusion that there is exactly one in this case. And then we look for the other option where SH does not belong to it, and we have concluded that there cannot be any because if there is not SH, there must be SH. Good. So then this concludes the exercise. Let me close here the brace and then see you in another video. Okay, and this was my daughter just coming here just in time. So, ciao.